Hey, what's going on guys? Valry here. Um, I'm making this video because I just want to give everybody guy, uh, a quick update on what I have been up to. Because uh, as you might have noticed that I have not been uploading for the past two or three weeks. I'm actually not sure. I hadn't checked. Because there have been a lot of things that have been going on in my life. Um, that is making me a bit more busier than usual. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, let's move on to today's uh, update video, and I want to talk about uh, the ch uh, this bit, uh, YouTube channel's direction. The first thing is that um, you might have noticed is that for the past don't know how many months, or it might have been it been even a year, I have been uploading nothing but uh, initial the arcade stage, um, and I sort of want to change that. Uh, but that does not mean that uh, I am going to give up initial DRK stage uh, completely. So I was thinking like maybe we can do other games together. Like, uh, you know, Need for Speed, Forza, or like iRacing, or Acetyl Corsa. You know, just generally stuff that you... I want to know like what you guys are interested in so that... Uh, we can spend more time together, like making fun videos for you guys to watch and, you know, hanging out. And on the other hand, uh, because I have been streaming uh, Initial D lately, so uh, I went to the arcade and then I asked for permission to plug in my capture card and that's actually how I get all my Initial D Zero videos. Um, the thing is, uh, a lot of you guys that watch my uh, YouTube content, uh, let's say my videos, and sometimes my live stream. Wait, oh, by the way, I just did a live stream yesterday and it was great. Uh, the footage that you're watching right now comes from uh, yesterday's live stream. And the thing is, well, it's great that a lot of you guys are enjoying what I have been doing because, uh, frankly speaking, that it's you guys that keep me going, you know. Uh, but on the other hand, it's like, I know a lot of you guys are very, very nice in the comments to me. Like, uh, I really, really do appreciate that. But sometimes, you know, you get, you get like that one of two person that, uh, that really don't get what you're doing and... This is one, the part whereby I want to make it clear, okay? As uh, for those particular one or two people, is that Initial D Arcade is different from Initial D Anime. What do I mean? Well, uh, you know you know how uh, in the anime, they always talk about like very technical stuff, like uh, weight shifting, and as, uh, you know, just a bunch of other that, that n none of that applies in the arcade game. And, but some of you guys seems to get a misconception that it applies, uh, but frankly speaking, it does not. Uh, and that's where, oh, by the way, uh, as a, me, as a Singaporean Chinese, uh, oh, I'm not, uh, I'm like, I'm not from China, I'm from Singapore, but I am still Chinese, okay? Uh, for me, in in Mandarin, in in the language Mandarin, we have this word called cloud gamers. What is a cloud gamer? A cloud gamer is basically a gamer that have never played the said game, but he's seen some YouTube videos of it, or he have uh, he have uh, read about the game, and he pretends like he know he and he understand everything about the game. Those people, you guys are annoying, okay? <laughs> okay, but uh, most of you guys are great. Uh, frankly speaking, most of you guys are, are, are really great. Uh, and I really appreciate that you guys really support me. But uh, sometimes you get like this one or two person that thinks that he's, he, he understands everything in, about the game. But, frank, but you can tell from his comments that he have not played the game. Or at least not played it to the level of uh, getting, getting like specialist uh, time attack ranking X and stuff like that. Oh, which by the way, uh, even though I do get uh, time uh, specialist time attack rankings, uh, I do not consider myself a very good uh, driver in initial D arcade. There are lots of people that are way better than me, 
and that's why I want you guys to don't treat me like a messiah or don't act surprised when I lose, okay? And frankly speaking, you can see that uh, from my, especially after the switch to uh, Arcade Stage 0 version 2, that I've been crashing a lot. Uh, yeah, on the other hand, it's like, it's like, if you look at my time attacks, a lot of my time attack videos, like let's say the one from yesterday's live stream on Iro Hazaka, even though I did get specialist timing in the end, uh, you realize that it says that my ranking is like top world top 560 or something. So that means that there are at least 500 people that are better than me. And I have played a lot of time attack and I usually go around in between like uh, ranking 500 to 1000. So give or take, there's at least 500 people that is better than me at initial D. Which is very significant if you think about like how few people actually play this game because this game is only available in arcades um, in Japan and in places like Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and you know, and a lot of these players they're they're in uh, Japan, uh, Japan. And only, only you you will see that uh, I am not Japanese, uh, and the videos that I captured, the game is in English because uh, in Singapore you get a English English release of the game. But majority of the people who play this game are Japanese, and that's why I've been trying to put in Japanese subtitles and stuff like that uh, with uh, with a lot of help from my friend. Uh, one of them is Asuka, and if you are watching this video, I really appreciate what you you have been doing for me. And maybe you know we should hang out sometimes when I next time maybe I when when I go to China or Hong Kong. Okay, now let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about uh, Need for Speed Heat. This game had just been uh, revealed uh, at Gamescom. And uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. You know, I played Need for Speed Payback and I played Need for Speed 2015. And I am pretty looking forward to this game. i uh, relatively, relatively excited about uh, Need for Speed Heat. Now, the first thing uh, I want to look at is graphics, okay? Uh, and a lot of people, they hate Need for Speed Payback's graphics because it's a downgrade to Need for Speed 2015. And in Need for Speed Heat, it seems like uh, the graphics had gone better again. But frankly speaking, I don't give a shit about uh, this kind of stuff. I don't care. Well, the reason is because I actually think that Need for Speed Payback have better graphics um, but, but I know you guys are probably thinking like, what the hell, this guy is insane, this guy is out of his mind, what is he talking about? But, okay, let me, you guys please hear me out. The thing about graphics is that I don't give a shit whether a game is, uh, looks realistic or not, or how many particle effects it's got on the screen. What I care about when you are driving in a high speed racing game is whether you are able to see stuff clearly in front of you and need for speed payback you can see very clearly what's in front of you and you are able to drive uh, and adjust your steering accordingly but in need for speed 2015 i actually really really hate it because half the time i am confused and i cannot see what's ahead of me and you know it's just like all the puddles on the ground, all the shimmering, and all the light reflecting off the wet floor and stuff like that. And I really hate to say this, but it looks like this is coming back to Need for Speed Heat. And I really hope that there's a way in the settings menu whereby you can turn all that off. So that it doesn't affect the core gameplay. Now, that's uh, the core gameplay is the most important part of a racing game. And that's what I care about. Now, next, next up, let's talk about the physics. Uh, a lot of people are happy that 
break to drift appears to be gone. But here's the thing. In uh, Need for Speed had always been an arcade game. It's uh, as in an uh, arcade racing genre, not that it's like an actual arcade, like uh, games like One Gun Midnight, Maximum Tune, and uh, you know, Initial D. But it's still in the arcade racing genre. And you know, sometimes people get mad at Need for Speed or you know, uh, Initial D for letting you drift a uh, front wheel drive car and brake to drift and stuff like that. But come on, man. If you wanted a realistic game, you would have played. You just go and play a Saddle Corsa. It's great. It's a great game. Uh, but you know, you know what? We, uh, when when we play Need for Speed or when we play Initial D, we are not looking for realism. We are looking for fun. And let me ask you, how fun is it to go around the band drifting at 150 km per hour in a front wheel drive car? It's something that you will probably never be able to do in real life. So why not get get it to be able to be done in a video game? You know, it's a brilliant idea. And I really like that. But, you know, the only thing, the only reason that I can see people hate Break to Drift is that drifting is so overpowered in Need for Speed 2015 and Payback that it makes grip driving sort of like useless. But... To be honest, it's an arcade game, you know, drifting is fun, why would you hate drifting? And that's what, that's how I feel about it, but, you know, maybe Need for Speed Heat is not abandoning drifting, maybe it's just making drifting and grip driving balanced, and if that's the case, then I'm down for it, you know, I am not going to pre-order Need for Speed Heat, uh, until they show me something else that I can be excited about, but uh, yeah, as long as drifting is not going away, I'll be happy. Now, and a lot of people, they want to talk about microtransactions and how it's ruining games, but here's the thing, Need for Speed Heat, uh, during the Gamescom interview, they say that they have no plans for microtransactions to be in the game, which is great. Because uh, Need for Speed for the past two years have been mostly a single player experience. And really microtransactions is, I wouldn't say it's a free to play game kind of a thing. Because, uh, you know, full fledged $60 AAA game have been doing microtransactions for a very long time. Longer than people have uh, assumed. Or, or uh, when uh, microtransactions became infamous. Uh, People thought they, they come from free-to-play games, but actually, you know, they have been around for a really long time. Uh, so, they saying that uh, microtransactions will not be in the game is great and all, but uh, on the other hand, you have a question uh, with the game developers is that how are they going to make money? Look, if a game costs $60 in 1970, it should have, it should have cost the three hundred dollars by now but it's still sixty dollars and microtransactions is the way that game companies have been have been able to continue to make games you know it's because that consumers like us we don't want to pay more than sixty dollars for a full-fledged game and really if you think about it microtransactions is not that bad of course, I still hate microtransactions, especially the one that gives you an in-game advantage, but for the past two years, if you look at Need for Speed 2015 and if you look at Need for Speed Payback, they have been doing pretty great. Like, sometimes you get microtransactions in Payback, but frankly speaking, I've not paid a single dime and I enjoy playing the game. Uh, that game is not uh, a pay-to-win. It's definitely not a pay to win. So, I am very confident in Need for Speed Heat that they are going to be uh, similar. And frankly speaking, similar to Payback is a good thing because Payback's physics is pretty great. And I actually really enjoy playing it a lot. And that's pretty much for the video. And I know that this is a very different format than the kind of video that I usually have been doing. But, uh, you know, I want to do some changes 
and I want to see uh, if you guys uh, enjoy watching uh, this sort of video where I just talk about stuff and not really, you know, uh, like it's like a more casual kind of video uh, whereby you guys can just uh, comment. Oh, by the way, uh, be sure to subscribe and uh, uh, turn on the bell icon so that uh, if you want to uh, see me upload, uh, like uh, whenever I upload a video, you will immediately get notified for it. That's what the bell icon is for. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, if you have not enjoyed this video, also leave a comment and tell me why so that I can improve on my future videos. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and I'm glad that you guys and enjoy or rather stay with me till the end of this uh, boring just update video. And I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, I have been, uh, as I am recording this video right now, I have been actually, you know, uh, editing a new initially video that I think would come out very soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Bye. See you next time.